Let's go up to File and then go to Open Scene. We're going to open up Pendulum.mb. I'll hit Open right here. Okay, so this pendulum, what I have here is I have an arm with a weight at the end, but the weight at the end has a ring on it, which means that this can pivot. So with a traditional pendulum on a clock, the weight at the end of that pendulum is solid, so it just moves with the arm. If there is a hinge or a pivot at the um, bottom of the, at the top of the weight, what that means when we animate this is that we're going to have to create some overlapping action. So before we get into the nuts and bolts of the exercise, I want to make sure that your settings are exactly the same as my settings on my computer. So let's go over here and let's turn on auto keyframe. So I'm just going to click on this button and it'll turn red. Let's go over here to our animation preferences and I'll click on settings right here. I'm going to make sure my time is at film, which is 24 frames per second. I'm going to go to animation. I'm going to click on weighted tangents. And let's change this to linear. And then let's go to the time slider. And under playback, instead of playback speed at play every frame, we're going to change this to real time 24 frames per second. All right, so now I'm going to hit save. And now we're ready to get started. OK, so I'm going to select the arm right here of the pendulum. And if I hit E for my rotate tool, you can see I can rotate this arm. And I can also independently rotate the weight on the end of this arm. So we'll start by rotating the, um, the parent, and then we'll rotate the child. All right, so starting on frame one, I'm going to go to Rotate X. I'm going to right click and go to Key Selected. So we'll go and actually, I need to rotate this a little bit. So we'll say, let's say it's rotating negative 30 degrees at our start point. So now I'm going to move my time slider forward to frame 21 halfway through our animation here. And I'll rotate to the other side. And then I'll just actually type this in, which is going to be our rotate x value is going to be 30. So here we have 1, 21. And then at 41, we need to go back to negative 30. So now if I hit play right here, I can see here's my animation. So right now, it doesn't look good at all. And that's because our graph, our in and out points on our graph are set to linear. So let's go to Window, and then Animation Editors, and we'll go to the Graph Editor. And let's just click on Polysurface 2 right here, which is the arm. So here I have my linear tangents. So we're going to want to reset some stuff here. So I'm going to select all of the keyframes for our cycle or our loop of animation here. I'm going to hit the flat tangents right here. And just to review, the flat tangents gives me a slow in and slow out. So now if I hit play on the animation, you can see it's very much, it looks a whole lot better. All right, so I'm going to stop this. And let's just close the graph editor for right now. So you can see here, all we need to do was go in and add those flat tangents. So now, what we need to address now is the weight on the end. And what we want it to do is, as this weight reaches the apex, we want, we want the weight to continue to move past this arm. So think of like a tail. We want like a whip effect. OK, so what I'll do is I'll just offset this animation. So at 21, the arm reaches its apex right here. So then I'll just go to, say, 25, select the weight, and I'll rotate this so that it reaches its apex 
after the um, arm reaches its apex. So I'm, I'll just go right here. Let's change this to an even 20. And then I'll right click. I'll click on I'll click on rotate X and then I'll right click and go to key selected. So I've got a keyframe on 25. So let's go to frame 5 and let's rotate the other direction here. So I'll change this to negative 20 and press return. So now on frame um, 41 we can't go to frame 45 because we don't have that on our range slider. So let's take a look at this in our graph editor again. So let's go to window animation editors and then go to graph editor. So let's select, so we got our poly surface one right here and let's go to view and then go to frame all. Let's try that one more time. There we go. And let's also select our arm right here. All right, so what we need is we need a value over here um, at frame 41, but we don't know what that value is going to be. So let's go in and just select our two keyframes and let's smooth this out by hitting the flat tangents button. All right, so now let's see here. If we go, I'm just going to select now just the weight. And here we are at frame 5 and 25. And what we need is a value over here at 41. So what we can do is we can look at the value at 21. And I can see my value at 21 is 15.84. So I'll copy that number when I go to frame 41 to get my value for 41. So it'll be negative 15.84. And now you can see we have a completed loop. Now this doesn't look exactly the same as this loop right here. And um, the reason is, is, is because it's been offset. So we can look at our loops to make sure that they are transitioning smoothly by going to view and then go to infinity. So this dotted line shows us what happens before and after the loop. So when we hit play on the timeline, we know that the whole animation is going to loop again and again. So what I'll do is I'll go to curves and then pre-infinity and go to cycle and I'll go to curves post-infinity and go to cycle and we can see we can see that this is because these lines are smooth we know we have a smooth loop on our animation so I'm gonna click on just the weight right here and you can see I have the infinity lines here and I'll go to curves pre-infinity and I'll go to cycle I'll go to curves, post infinity, I'll go to cycle. And here you can see we have a problem on our loop here. I've got, it's all smooth right here, but then here's a jump right here. So we need to smooth this out. So let's go to forty one. So we need a keyframe at frame one. And so at frame 21, we're at 15.84. At 41, we're at negative 15.84. So that means on frame 1, we're going to be at negative 15.84. So now I have, I'll go to view here, frame all, and I've got a smoother curve for my overlapping action. So let's go in and let's watch the animation. And you can see as it 
you can see it kind of drag behind the arm as it moves. So what if we wanted to exaggerate this? What I could do is I could go in and select the keyframe at the apex at the highest point and the lowest point of rotation. And then instead of moving, what I can do is I can hit R for my scale tool and I'll put my mouse right at the zero point, which means I'll scale from the center. So then I'm going to hold down shift and click and drag. Oops. Make sure I have R. Hold down shift. Here we go. And I want to just scale this up some. And I can see I kind of have a bump right here. So I'm going to take this keyframe and then I'll hit W for my move tool and I'm going to move this over a little bit. All right, so let's select this line, and I'm going to break the tangent and select the arm right here, this handle right here. Hit W for my um, for my uh, move tool, and I'm going to click and hold and just adjust this right here, smooth it out a little bit. All right, so let's take a look and hit play, and now we have a more exaggerated swing at the end of our pendulum. Okay, so that is the end of the exercise. Please make sure that you save your work before you quit Maya.